Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are making this gorgeous little love heart crochet purse oh, for Valentine's or for any kind of gift that you wish to give to your family, your friend, your whoever in your life, your partner, whoever, whatever you want to give. Now, I did do a little flap here with a button, which I'm going to take it undone and show you what it looks like inside. So there you go. And you've got plenty of room in there for, look, it's the size of my hand. So there's plenty of room for, you know, I did this in the tutorial as well, your car keys, your house keys, a couple of credit cards, a couple of whatever else you want to put in there. Pop your little flap over, button her up, pop it over your wrist or you can hold it like that whichever suits you so you can do so much with your bag and use it for anything you like we've created this today for our valentine's project this year so there you go all right so what i'm going to do is tell you the yarn i used roughly between 27 and 30 grams that is all i used you need one button you i used a four um, hole button but you can use a two however when making bags and things that are going to close up like this that you want to close up tight I believe a four hole button is a lot better doesn't necessarily mean you have to use one that just works well for me all right you will need uh, the cotton I'm using today is a Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton now this is their eight ply or DK weight or number three weight overseas However, you can make your bag, without the scraps of yarn, <laughs> you can make your bag in an, a 10 ply or an Aran weight, a uh, number four weight. You can make it in a light weight. Remember, if you make it in a very thinner yarn, your love heart's going to be a lot smaller. All right. So it, it either use an eight ply or a 10 ply. So either use a DK or an Aran or a three weight or a four weight. All right, but I think the three weight is fine. This is a very soft purse for me. If you wanted yours to be a little bit more dense, uh, you can find a cotton that has more of a dense texture uh, and use that instead. Well, I've used a nice soft cotton one, but it's entirely up to you. A DK weight usually calls for a four millimeter hook. And so today we are actually going to use a four millimeter hook. You will need your scissors. You will need two stitch markers and you will need that sewing weaving needle not forgetting your button all right so there you go guys thank you very much for joining us and creating our gorgeous uh valentine's day piece for 2023 this is a perfect little purse that you can gift or even keep for yourself thank you for joining us good luck making our valentine's day purse Alrighty guys, we're going to start off by making a slip knot. Grab the tail end of your yarn, wrap it around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding it down there. Pass your back loop halfway over your finger. Pass the other loop all the way over. Grab your hook, pop it in that loop and just give everything a tug. Good to have a long tail. It's easier for weaving in later. All right. So now you are going to do what we call chains. And we're going to chain three. So yarn over your hook, pull a loop through once. Yarn over, pull through twice. Yarn over, pull through three times. In that stitch there, we are going to place, the very first stitch you, you did, we're going to place two half double crochets. I have to think about that. So yarn over your hook into the first, <laughs> into that first chain that we just did. Pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Pop a stitch marker in there, that will classify as your first half double crochet. Yeah. And then you're going to do another one in that same space. In you go, a little bit tight, holding everything. Pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through loops on your hook. Now we are chaining one only to turn your work. It doesn't count as anything, it's just to help you turn. So you turn your work whichever way you like, this way or the opposite way, and you're going to pop two half double crochets in the same stitch that you are in. So yarn over your hook, one, 
Wait, pop your stitch marker in first. And two. Two half double crochets in your very last stitch with your stitch marker. Pop your hook in and do one. If it's a bit awkward, you can take your stitch marker out now. And two. Yeah. Now we chain one, turn our work again. And that is going to be our pattern for a little while. Yarn over your hook. In that first stitch, you are popping two half double crochets. One. Oops. And pop your hook. I'm sorry. Pop your stitch marker back in there. Not your hook. <laughs> and do a second one in there. But for the rest of the stitches across the row, you're going to do one in each stitch. And then at the end, you can do two. All right. This is increasing. So one in your first stitch, which is actually a second if you think about it. One into your third. And two into the last stitch right there. So you've got your one and two. Taking out your stitch marker, chain one, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do, all right? So you chain one, just pull up that loop for a minute. And I just want to show you real quickly how to count your stitches, all right? We are going up by two in every row for now. These little V looking things that you see here, that is how you count them. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so that's what you need to do. So I'm going to show you one more row, and then you're going to head off and do your increased rows, which I'll talk about in a minute. All right, so you've chained your one, turn your work in your first stitch right there, and you can see them. But Give them a little tug. It's always one little hole that you see. Yeah. So in your first stitch, you are doing two half double crochets. But the first one needs to have mm, stitch marker in there. Like so. Yeah. So one and two in the same stitch. Now, because we increased in the other round, we have one two, three, and four stitches across. And in your last stitch, what are you going to do? Two, one, and two, chain one, and get ready for the instructions. Take out your stitch marker. All right. So that's a simple, simple thing you are doing. You are turning your work, two in your first, make sure you put your stitch marker in your first stitch. So two in your first stitch, one in each stitch across, two in your last stitch, chain one, turn, and do exactly the same. So you're really repeating the increases until you reach 22 half double crochets across. We currently have, and let's check, one, come on, you can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half double crochets across. That's not including your chain. So there's eight there. You need 22 half double crochets across. All right. So in other words, just do another seven more rows increasing on your sides. And I shall meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty guys, this is what you should have. So you would have done your seven rows. You should have 22 uh, half double crochets across. You actually altogether have 11 rows. All right, so let's continue. In this row here, we're not going to increase. We're going to chain our one at the end of the row like we normally do, which I already have. You've got your chain there, yep. Turn your work like normal and do a half double crochet in your very first stitch. Right there. Whoops, too high, sorry. And pop your stitch marker in. Like so. 
oh, there we go, that was a bit tight. Now, no increasing, we're just going to put half double crochets in every stitch across. And off we go. Half double crochet in your next stitch, and again in your next, and again in your next. And what I'm going to do is not head, let you head off on your own. I'm just going to pop this on very fast, and we'll get to the end of the row, and I'll meet you there once you're done. And half double crochet in every stitch until we get to the stitch marker. Off we go. Alrighty guys, I'm almost there. I'll get a nice close up for you so you can see. Oh, that didn't go through. Let's try that again. I have two stitches left. I think I might have split that. Oh no, I didn't. That's good. So one into my second last stitch and just one only into the last stitch. Just the one for this row. Taking out your stitch marker and you should still have 22 half double crochets across. Yeah. Now we're chaining one, flipping our work again, and we're doing an increase row again. So it's two in the beginning. There's your first one. Pop your stitch marker in, like so. And a second one in there. <clears throat> Gotta get my thread is caught for some reason. I don't know what's happened here. Look, have a look at that. Look. <laughs> We've got a knot. Alright, so that's it. You are doing half double crochets all the way across until you get to your last stitch. And once again I'm gonna pop this on fast for you, and off we go. Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row. I've just done my second last stitch. Let's get a close up for you. We've got one stitch to go which is in there and in that one we are doing two half doubles. This is an increased row. One and two. And that was your increase row right there. Alright, it's going to start curving it's going to take a little tiny shape that's what we want to happen all right now the next part we need to do is we're going to do the next five rows one two three four five yeah no increasing all right let me start you off with the first row all you're doing is chaining one turning your work half double crochet in that first stitch by the way you should have had 24 stitches across don't know if i mentioned that uh, half double crochet in your first no increase and half double crochet in every stitch across once again gonna pop this on fast for you and off we go Alrighty guys, how'd you go? I'm at the end of the row here. Let's get a close up. I think I've got two stitches left. Yes, I have one before the stitch marker. And the actual stitch marker, we're just putting one half double crochet in there. Chain one. No matter what you do, you are chaining one at the end of every row. Alright, and that row that you did right there, you need to repeat that four more times. That's it. Repeat that row four more times. Meet me back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next.
Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of our rows. Very exciting. We're going to start to do what we call a decreased row now. So just flip your work like normal. Yarn over your hook. Start your half double crochet in here like normal. Hold it there. And then, let me get a close up for you. You can see that's better. So you're holding it there. You're jumping straight into the very next stitch and pulling another loop through and you have one, two, three, four, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook and pop your stitch marker in the top two loops of that stitch. It's very solid, but it's there. And then you're doing your half double crochets all the way across. Oh, I got crochet happy and forgot to stop. But I'm here. <laughs> no, I did stop, only just. All right, I said to get to the last two stitches, yeah? So now you're going to do these two half doubles together. So yarn over your hook like normal, pop your hook in like normal, pull a loop through like normal, but hold it there. Jump straight into that very next stitch, pull a loop through. You've got four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops, taking out that stitch marker like so. What you're going to start getting is that, yeah? Now what we're going to do, we are going to divide our work to bring the heart, top of the heart around, all right? So we're still going to turn like normal. So you're chaining one and you're flipping your work like normal. In this row, we're not decreasing, but we will be decreasing on both sides in the next row. Don't worry about that for now. Let's just worry about doing a half double crochet in that stitch there, just one. Popping your stitch marker in. <laughs> if you can get it in, like so. And nine half double crochets across. You've got one, we need 10 all together. So one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're going to skip two stitches here, one and two, and you're going to pop a stitch marker on your third. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, I'm just going to take this one out for now. You don't have to worry about that. So you go one, two, and on your third, you pop a stitch marker there and you leave it there and don't worry about that side for a long time. Because later, once we finish this side, you're going to work on this side and you're going to start on that stitch, all right? But in the meantime, the next few rows, oh dear, I'll just split the yarn there, will be decrease rows. Once you split that yarn, just give it a bit of a twist. It stops it from splitting again. So you're chaining one, turn your work like normal, you're going to do the first two stitches together. Start your half double crochet, hold it there, jump into your next stitch, pull a loop through, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. Place your stitch marker there. I'm just going to take this out. You don't have to worry about this. I'll fix that up later. I just can't find my stitch markers. <laughs> <laughs> don't you love it um, and you're going to do the same for the rest of the row you're going to do your half doubles in every stitch across until you get to your last two stitches and then you're going to do your two half doubles together again one more and your half double crochets together are 
one, pull up a loop, jump into your last stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook, take out your stitch marker, chain one, get ready to turn. But I just wanted to show you what you're working on now. All right, can you already start to see that it's curved like the heart here? Now it's going to curve like the heart there. So that is eight stitches across. All right, we've chained our one there, yes. All right, now we're going to decrease again. It's another decrease row. Flip your work, yarn over your hook, two together. One and two together. Pop your stitch marker in there. And you do your half doubles across. This is your second one, if you're including those two together as one. So one, two, three, four, five. Oops. And the last two stitches together, you're going to do them together, is six. So start it. Jump into your last stitch there. Four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook and you should have six as we've been counting. Chain one, get excited, this is your final row. What? They're saying, well on this side it is. <laughs> You're going to do two together one more time. So you're starting your half double. You don't need to put a stitch marker in here. Go into your next. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. No stitch marker. Go one, two, three, and four goes together. All right. So that one and that one together. Pull the loop through. Chain one. Just pull up a loop real tight. I mean, real tight, real tall. <laughs> and that is your... Um, one side of the heart done. Ta-da! Yay! All right, I'm going to pop this stitch marker back in here. Uh, one, two, what is it? One, two, and three. Uh, you don't need to because yours will already be there. Yeah? All right, so that's where we are at the moment. Yeah? You'll like that. Flip your work. Oh, no, don't flip your work. You've got to cut this. You have to cut your thread here. Make it a nice long tail just to give you extra tail to weave in. You don't need to if you don't want to. I just like the idea of it. Just, you know, squish it down like that. Yeah. Now, flip your work. Also, I'm going to pop. You don't need to because yours will already be there. A stitch marker in my last one. All right. So now you're going to pop your hook in the stitch where your stitch marker is. So you can take out that stitch marker. Laxel. Okay, now the first row we are not decreasing. So grabbing your thread and just popping it on your hook and pulling your thread through like so. Just passing your little tail forward because we're going to lock it into place. Yours truly does not knot in the middle of a row. I just lock into place and crochet over and then we weave it in as well. So we're chaining one. We're not decreasing in this round so you're doing a normal half double crochet in that stitch over your tail, like so. Pop your stitch marker in there and get ready for decrease round later, but not now. Yeah. Just pop your tail at the back for now, just for this moment while we do the rest of the stitches cross. So that's stitch number one, and then two, just keep going all the way across, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. I almost did decrease then, didn't I? <laughs> and ten. We're not decreasing yet, Mary. We will be in the next round. Chain one. Take out your stitch marker. Get excited, guys. A few rounds to go for this piece. Turn your work two together. So you got one and two together, which makes one stitch. Pop your stitch marker in that one stitch like so. So 
So that's one. You've got two, three, four, five, six, and then you go seven. And your last two together would be one and two together would make it eight. Take out your stitch marker. Ow. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Chain one. Turn your work. Two together. Oh, look how I'm starting to shake because we're almost finished. One and two together is <laughs> one stitch. Don't you love it? She shakes at the end of each section. <laughs> one. And then two. Three. Four, five, two together, two together makes six. You know what this means? You have one row left. Ah, get way too excited. Chain one, turn your work. One, which is two together, don't forget. Two three and your last two together makes it four get way too excited and i'm singing now <laughs> sorry guys chain up one just one big loop give your work a cut and that my dears is one heart complete don't worry about the ends we'll work on those later what I would like you to do, however, is to do one more heart because we need two of them to form the bag, don't we? All right, off you go and do your second heart and I'll meet you back here once you're done. All righty, guys, what you should have now is two of these pieces. Now, you have a choice of... Um, whether you want to weave in your ends now or whether you want to do them later. My suggestion would be to do them later so you can find some stitches. However, if you are wanting to weave them in now, I've already weaved in one already on this side. So we're going to do the opposite side. Now, it's entirely up to you which side you want your um, right side or wrong side it doesn't matter they're, they're, because they've worked up and down up and down it doesn't really matter however I've already weaved in this side here and I weaved it in the side that this tail is on when we were crocheting there was one tail on one side that's the side I've classified as the wrong side so we're going to weave in just one tail here and then I'll show you the other tails after we put the purse together or the bag together it's a purse bag whatever you want to call it started off being a purse but it's looking relatively big for a purse <laughs> no but it's okay because it's good to have it bigger than smaller don't you think all right so this end is the one that's in here and maybe your best bid was to leave this end loose so you know which is the wrong side and right side but i'll explain that later so all you're doing is finding some stitches let's go like that to weave in just check the front make sure you can't see the needle and i can see it so i'm going to take that out a little bit you want it so you're splitting a little bit of yarn which is an absolute no-no in crochet you shouldn't split but i do it anyway just remember if you split you cannot take this undone it's so hard to come undone all right so i'm splitting some yarn to get my thread through and my tail's not long enough it's short enough i mean let's do that and then just splitting some more threads to get your needle through have a look make sure you can't see the needle no good it's really important that you can't see the needle because otherwise the yarn shows on the front and if say you're using a white end to weave in on a red um, piece you don't want that to be shown yeah And it's a bag, it's kind of inside your bag, so it shouldn't be noticeable. Bag, purse, let's call it a purse, Mary, call it what it is. Now, to make sure that your ends, that you are working on the right sides, we want to work on the right sides of our work now. 
All right, make sure that both your ends are on your left hand side. Yep, grab one and pass it over to the other. Grab your hook. This is the part where we're going to start to close this section here. We're going to leave a little gap so that we can pop our little whatever in there. Purse, <laughs> if you will. Pair of keys. I don't know what you want to put there. All right. So what we're going to do to keep the love heart shape, we're going to pop our hook. Let's get a close up so you can see it. In the second stitch, you remember how we had four stitches up the top? We had one, two, three, four. What you want to do is pop it in your second last stitch, or you go one, two, and pop it in that third stitch. Then you do the same here, one, two, pop it in your third stitch. That is where we're going to start closing up our purse. Grab a piece of thread, and then just pull that through like so. Grabbing your tail, let's just have a look at this, making sure you pass your tail forward just for a moment because we haven't knotted here, so we want to lock that into place. All right, so we're going to chain one, and in the same stitch, you're going to pop a single crochet. Hook in the stitch, pull a loop through. Let's get rid of that little thread there, or oh, whatever that is. You've got your two stitches there, yarn over, I'm sorry, your two threads, and pull through both those threads. You can pop a stitch marker in here. You won't need it, but I want you to actually do it. Pop a stitch marker in there. I'll explain that later to you. So pop your stitch marker in there. All right. We're going to crochet. I'm not going to crochet over the tail that we just added. We're going to crochet over the tail that's from the other side. Now, this is when you haven't weaved in your ends. We're going to crochet over this one. So you have a last stitch right there and a last stitch on the opposite side and just bring that tail at the back and just continue to crochet one what I want you to do is put a second one in there because it's kind of a corner and we want to make it turn there yeah? turn our work a little bit and this is where you want to find any stitch on this side but through the stitch not through the space through the stitch here and through the stitch on the opposite side and then pull your loop through like normal and continue your single crochet. Now you want to find, and where am I? I'm already in that stitch. Now you want to find another side stitch there and another side stitch at the back. Make sure you're getting both your pieces like that, yeah? And when you come to this kind of area, it can be a little tight, but you are popping your hook. Mm -hmm. It's very tight in both sides, like so. And into, when we get to the sides, it'll be okay. We're still just, this is the area where all our half double crochet two togethers were. So it's a bit tight, yeah. And then we're gonna go into the next Half double crochet, two together. If it's too tight for you and you just don't want to do it, jump over the stitch. It shouldn't make a big gap, but I'd like to put them all in. Okay. Mm. I'm going to be here for everybody to sit down and watch me do it. Once I get to the straighter edge, I'll just pop this on fast. I just want to get through this tight area of the two togethers. Two togethers, can I say that? Oh, I don't know. Well, I said it. <laughs> All right. There and there. I think we are now officially oh, almost, <laughs> almost on that area. We could put it in there. I think that's a really big gap. I'd like to grab that. It's, a, it's both a big gap, so it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter where you put your single crochets and that was really loose just don't do them so loose because they will it will pull and you know it'll look loose you can tell it's loose so make sure you tighten it up don't do it too tight either but that's what you're looking at so far all right there's no right or wrong way of doing this part once you get to your straighter edge you can probably put it through any space you see trying to keep your uh, both your pieces straight oh, I didn't bring that out that's better try to keep 
both your pieces as straight as possible, making sure that it all marries up at the end. Yeah. If you move it around, it's not going to marry up. All right. So I think I'm going to let you head off on your own doing this part. I think you've seen enough. And what I want you to do is just get to the base area here. So just get to, and I'll pop my stitch marker in so you can see it there, and I'll show you a close-up. Let's show you a little close-up there. All right, so you've probably got one on the corner, one before it, and then the stitch before that. So maybe your third last stitch from this piece here. Get to your third last stitch. I'll meet you there and show you how we're going to do the base, and then you can do the rest up to here on your own. All right, so get to that stitch area right here, and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, how gorgeous does the finished area look? Now, just a quick heads up, I forgot to mention, if your stitches are too far apart, then you have skipped some stitches. If they're close together, it means if they're too close together and it's looking like that, then you've put too many stitches in the one space. But I found filling up each space as closely as possible made the edge look better. Again, not necessary. You can have your little spaces if you like. Now, I haven't put my um, third last stitch in yet, so we're going to do that together. Might be even better fourth last. All right, I think it's a fourth last. We've got to go into this tight area here. Hopefully yours marries up at the end, yeah. Just pop that there. And all we're doing with that little knot there, you might have one, you might have two, it doesn't matter, is we are crocheting over it. Pop the knot at the back, pull a loop through, like so. And then in the same stitch, you are doing a second single crochet. Then turn your work to the side, and in that middle stitch, if you've got a tail, just pass it at the back, you're doing a single crochet. Then you turn again, and this is where the tight area comes in. Might have already come in for you guys, but mine's coming in here, there, and through the last stitch on the opposite side, and you're doing one, and then you're doing a second one. And then you got to find, oh, it's really tight here, look at that. Pop a stitch there, pop a stitch on the opposite side, like so. And now you're going up your sides instead of down. And you might find, I don't know if it's my imagination, but you might find this side a little easier. Like that. And into there. Like that. And I think you know the rest. If you're like me, you can get it through both thicknesses real tight. Um, I think I might have skipped a stitch there. Let's go back and get a close up. Right there. There's a stitch and there's a stitch. Try not to skip any stitches or you will have a gap looking thing. Yeah. There and there. I don't think I need to show you how to do the rest. What I want you to do is continue in that manner. Before we do, just have a look at it and you can see how I'll do it this way so you can have a look. It's formed. I was going to pull it a bit. It's a bit tight there for me. You can see how it's formed that little kind of a, a base heart shape, all right, where it's not sticking up like that and it's not kind of bowing like that. It's a little tiny bit of a lift. You can see the lift a little bit, but not pulling too tight, yeah? All right, so your job now is to continue all the way up the side here. What I want you to do is get to, remember before how we started on the third last stitch? You're going to do exactly the same. That's your first, oops, I'm not even in front. That's your first stitch and that's your second stitch. This is the opposite side. So if you looked at it that way, that would be your third last stitch, yeah? So you're gonna pop it, oh, silly me, put it in one only. Go to the opposite side and find your stitches. If you're not sure, Find your tail, could be on this side or that side, doesn't matter. One, two, and pop it into that third last from the outside. So what you should have is, um, here we go, what you should have is three stitches this side 
and three stitches this side. So you started on your second last stitch or third last stitch. It doesn't matter which side you're looking at it. I, know, I think you know what I mean, yeah? <laughs> so pop that in that second stitch there. That's all I needed to say. That was too much, wasn't it? Um, continue making your single crochets. Get to that stitch just before your stitch marker and I shall meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of this side right here. And I asked you to get to um, a stitch before your stitch marker and I haven't done that. I mean, one more stitch to go. Hello, come on, you can do this Mary. Alright, so there's the stitch before your stitch marker right there. You need to put a single crochet in that stitch and then you need to put a second single crochet, making sure you're going through both the thick thicknesses on the other side, yeah? Then you are doing one single crochet in that stitch right there, taking out your stitch marker. And so far, that is what you have. What we're going to do now is we're going to form a little single crochet row around the edge of our heart itself. All right, so we're here. Yeah, what I want you to do, classify that stitch as the stitch that you went into here. We'll explain that at the end, right? In fact, what we're going to do is pop a stitch marker in there. That way you don't get too confused. So you pop a stitch marker in there, in that stitch that we just did. All right, so once you've got your stitch marker in there, we're going to go across the last two stitches, yeah? So single crochet in your next, single into your next right there. And in that stitch, you're doing a second single crochet like that. Turning your work along the side, you are going to single crochet down until you get to that little middle section there. Now we'll do this together. And there's no right or wrong way of doing this, so just Find a stitch, which is not so tight, we hope. <laughs> not as tight as mine. And do a single crochet in that stitch. Jump into your next stitch. Do a single there. Single there. Single into your next. And just before, let's see where we are. These are the two stitches we've left. This and this has to be crocheted two together. So just go into the very, oh, where are we? We're there. Let's take that out. I just want to look at that stitch. It doesn't look like I did it right. Let's try that again. This is the area where we've got our two together. So we've got to be very careful on where we put our stitch. So we're going into the space for our two together. And that tight little stitch and the space, big space you see there, you're going to do the two together one and two we'll do that again so you can see what I just did there you go into that tight stitch pull up a loop go into the space pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops and what you now have is those two stitches that we didn't work on from the beginning yeah that we've left so single into your first single into your next and then you're doing your two together the loose stitch and the tight stitch so in pull a loop through into the next one pull a loop through three loops yarn over pull through all three loops and then you just continue along single in every space you see single just being wary when you get to the top and i'll explain that to you in a second Here's a top where you've got your, remember the stitch marker we had in the beginning that we'd placed that stitch way at the beginning when we first started this uh, border row? There you'll have a little space, then you'll have one and two stitches. Once you get into that stitch, you need to put two single crochets. But I think we have another one right here. All right, and you can see them, they're the, the Vs you see. You jump into your V and you do one single crochet and two all in the same V then you do one into your next and here's where it gets a tad tricky oh, it's not tricky it's just a little different yeah 
in that space right there, which is filled up, but we're still going to put a single crochet in there. So single in that space. So it's not really tricky, but grab your stitch marker and pull it and then do a single through the back of your stitch marker there. Take out your stitch marker and you're doing a single in that stitch marker stitch. Then you're going to do a single in that space you see right there. A single in your next stitch, one. And a single in that second stitch. And in that second stitch, you are putting a second single crochet because it's a corner. All right, let me show you what you've done so you can see it. All right, so this is what you have now. You have not only done that row right there and made your corners with your two there and your two there. You've also closed up here. So later, when you use your bag, you've got a little space to put your keys and your purse and everything else in there. All right, so what we're going to do now is continue. Now, remember this side here might be a little bit tricky. You may or may not be able to see it, but these are your two stitches in the center. This, this and this one here, that stitch there, is your join two together. All right, so just be weary when we get to it. In the meantime, you are single crocheting all the way down this side. Okay, so I got a little quiet there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it happens sometimes. I forget I'm, re I'm recording. <laughs> Do you like that? Um, now, this space is a little bit gappy for me. I was going to put a second one in there, but I won't. Oh, no, I can't because this is the, let's see, one and two. You join that and that together. I almost made a mistake. So you grab the stitch, not the space. Start your single crochet, jump into the space, and then finish it off. And then you do your two single crochets. One and two. Then you're doing the same here. You're joining that space and that stitch together. So start your single crochet, jump into that tight stitch, if yours is as tight as mine, and close off your two together. And then your single crocheting all the way across your piece. Now being careful when we get to that top corner area, we need to do two single crochets in there. We're not there yet, so I'm not worried. Just keep going and going. Are we there yet? You've got your one and your two. We're not there yet. We still have a bit more to go. There. And there's the corner. See how you got one and two? In that second stitch, oh wow, it's really tight. In that second stitch, I'm going to pop my stitch mark, my thread over it. You're going to do one single crochet and two single crochets. Pop the thread at the back for a minute, jump into your next stitch. And in that space, what are you doing? A single crochet in the space. And remember the corner stitch right before your stitch marker? You need to do a single crochet in there. So what you need to do, it's a bit tricky. You just need to find that corner stitch like so. Pull a loop through and do your normal single crochet. Then you are just slip stitching into the stitch with your stitch marker. Pull a loop through. Chain one and pull up that loop. Take out your stitch marker. Have a look at your piece and make sure you... Oh, I can lay it out, sorry. Make sure you are happy with your heart. Yeah? There's that side right there. There's this side right here. This to me um, really is the, the right side of your work, okay? It doesn't matter if you want to use that side of your bag. It doesn't matter. But this is the right side of your work. So really, this is where you would need a little button rather than on that side. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. I just wanted to get you to this part right here. Don't cast off. What? They're saying, what? We need to do some handles now all right so let's start with doing our um, little handles 
Very exciting now. Very, very exciting. Now, we've chained one. We actually didn't. We pulled up a loop, which, well, which is a chain one. Now, you need to decide how long you want your handles to, to be. Now, I want them uh, long enough to go over my wrist and still have a little bit of room for me to be able to pop my hand in my bag so it's not too tight. So I'm going to chain up 40 chains. And off we go. There's one we've already done. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thirty-nine, forty. When you pop your bat, your handle over, make sure your hand fits in there. I think my hand fits perfectly. It may tighten up a little bit because we're going to put stitches on it, but just make sure it fits. Make sure you didn't move your uh, piece around either. Yeah, has to be nice and still. Then you go over here to the opposite side of your piece that center stitch right there because that's where we are here we are on the center stitch yeah but we are on the side of the center stitch so what you want to do is go to the center stitch right there and just pop your stitch in there your thread I'm sorry your hook in the stitch next to that center stitch I don't know if you saw what I did there but notice how I've kept my chains straight and haven't turned them but pop your hook in the stitch right before your um, center stitch. Pull a loop through, keeping your chains straight still, and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Do try it, make sure your wrist goes in and you have space here, yeah? So what you're going to do here is you're going to do a single crochet in that corner stitch, just one. Then you're going to single crochet in the next stitch, two, and then you're going to chain your 40 again. So I'm going to pop this on fast for you, and you chain your 40 and get to the part where, I'm not going to let you go, just let get to the part where we're ready to slip stitch into there. So off we go and chain our 40, one, Thirty-nine and forty. All right. So right now you should have forty. Uh, apologies about the sun again. It's all over the place. The weather. It's really crazy. Make sure all your threads are out of the way. You're going to grab your piece, keeping your notice. I've kept my chain straight. You're going to jump right over here. Now this is the stitch. Oh, let's bring that up nice and close again. This is the stitch after your corner your corner or your center stitch is right there so we're jumping into the stitch before the center stitch so you go into that stitch there pull a loop through and single crochet then you single crochet into your corner stitch like so and then you single crochet into the stitch that you first started with which will be really tight like so and then guess what you're going to do now? You're going to single crochet across your chains. Now, there are many ways you can do this. Okay, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to find the right loop here. You can single crochet into each stitch you come to, and it doesn't matter how you do it, right? Your top stitches. Or you can single crochet into a third loop. It's entirely up to you. I just single crochet in whatever stitch comes my way. Ah, there you go. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> single crochet in all the stitches across. It's a very simple round, this one. I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this. So what I want you to do, and I'll show you so that you're not waiting, single crochet until you get to around the stitch just before your center piece, right? Now, it doesn't matter in which stitch you put it in, just make sure you keep your work straight, yeah? All right, so single crochet all the way around. It's going to take us forever, and I'll meet you there once we're done. 
Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of this side. And I say side because it's not the end of the row yet. We've got another side to do. Now, uh, I got to that stitch there and I said pop your stitch marker in that final stitch. Might take my stitch marker out. Pop your stitch marker, I'm sorry, pop your single crochet in that final stitch just before the end of your side. Yeah, so you need to do that, otherwise you'll be one stitch short. Then, remember we did our two single crochets here. We've got your one, or your two, or three. I think it's three. It should be three. And then, I think it is three, right there. Stuck right there. There's the third one right there. It's really tight. Excuse me, Mary. I think she does her stitches so tight. All right. And then... All you're going to do is jump straight. Oh, all my stitches are so tight. I did leave a little disclaimer up the top there before to leave your chains a little looser <laughs> and not as tight as mine. Uh, pop your hook in your very next chain and continue along your side on this side now. Very exciting. Oh, it's getting a little bit better. I must have started doing it looser after a while. Look at that. <laughs> I must have thought about it. All right, I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this side. You've done one side. Flip it. Continue to do this side. Get two. And once again, we'll pop a stitch marker in right into that. That's actually the stitch. We'll pop a stitch marker in the stitch rather than the chain. That's better. So what I want you to do is get... Oh, look how tight these stitches are. This is going to be annoying for me. And get to this chain right here. See that stitch right there? That is actually a chain. This is just really tight. So get to that last chain. I'm going to do it off air because I know it's going to be tight. And then wait for me at that stitch marker. And we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty, guys. Here we are at the end of this side. Now, get way too excited. Like, seriously way too excited. All right, I asked you to get to the last single crochet, which was extremely tight for me, as I said before, <laughs> before your stitches. You know how you have these three stitches along here? So what you're going to do here is you're going to do a single crochet in the first stitch, a single in your second, if you can get in there, which is tight for me, but it's there, yeah? But you're not going to do a single crochet in your third. You are going to slip stitch into there, like so. Again, sorry about the sun. It's coming and going like a yo-yo. <laughs> Pull up your loop. Now, this is entirely up to you once again. You can weave that in anywhere you like. I'm sorry, I'm threading the needle as I speak. I'm stalling. <laughs> I'm stalling. Um, all right, here we go. There's the little knot. My suggestion would be to either go cross that way and make the knot look flat or go this way and your knot will lift up. I'm going to go in the back loop of the stitch, the next stitch right there, pulling that knot down, oops, like so. So your knot literally falls into your next stitch, then you turn it over and you find some places to weave it in. Once again, making sure that you are not going, that's only at the top, so I'm not going through there, making sure you can't see your needle from the front. But there you go, how's that? And I'm gonna go right into the bag, why not? Why not? So I'm done. Three is done. I think that's it. What you have is one gorgeous bag or complete. However, it's not completely complete. We want to pop a little flap that goes over your bag and then pop a gorgeous button right flat bang in the middle. Now where or what side do you put it on is entirely up to you. But I'm going to put it on the side where I can see, see the stitches that we made. When I hold them like this, those stitches are facing me. If I hold it that way, see the stitches, they go towards the back. To me, that's the wrong side of our work. When you look at the stitches, it's facing you. That is the right side of your piece. Simply divine. All right, so that's that. 
grabbing your gorgeous little button, whichever that may be, we're going to put the button on first, I think. Where do you want the button to go? Do you want it to go all the way down here? No, it's a bit silly. Um, up the top, too close. I would say on row number, there's your first one, your second one, around your third one right there. Let's get a close up so you can have a look. Yeah, there's your first, your second, and there's your third. So your button should just be touching your third. Flat bang right in the middle of those two stitches there or as close to it as you can get. Now my button has four holes. I love this button and I love the actual see-throughness of it all. I really do, I can't help myself. I've used it once or twice before. Now you don't have to use a button with four holes. If you've got a two hole button, even better. But I find with um, things like this or bags like this, a four hole button works better since we're going to be popping a flap over it it kind of sits in place better all right so what you want to do is grab some thread well, not too much you don't have to fuss too much yeah give it a cut grab your sewing darning weaving needle or whatever you have in stock make sure however that your needle fits through the button holes yeah it's really important you start sewing and then all of a sudden your needle doesn't fit and you have to stop all right, so what we're going to do here, so that you can have a nice look, see, the button has to be put on the inside as well as the outside, not through both those pieces, or you're closing your piece together and you don't want that. All right, so what you do is you grab your two stitches there, and you can go down as far as you like. I like to go, I don't know, maybe even there, yeah? Keep your button as straight as you want, Right there, right in the centre, yeah? Look, let's not worry about the button yet. Let's find where you want to place a button. So that's your first row, your second row. Hang on. Your first, your second, and your third. And I said just below your third. Or anywhere near it, yeah? Anywhere near it. But making sure you are keeping in between these two single crochets, yeah? So pop your thread through. Don't put it all the way through because we haven't exactly tied it in a knot yet. So you want to leave a little tail there. Then you grab your button and you're putting it on the very top. Oh well, we're so far away. You're putting it on or in the very, very top of your hole. Whether it's the second hole or the third, and I just realised I'm pulling it through. We don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't pull the thread through um, and then put it through the top of this button as well pulling it through like so not all the way and then you are going to place it on the bottom of see where we are there on the base of the stitch so your button comes down a little bit like so so there's your button center now, if you find you don't like it, you can take it undone and adjust it. But I can see that right flat bang in between those two stitches, which is what I want. Now I want to finish off, not finish off, I want to fill up the rest of the gaps. So I'm going down to, I might have to, where am I? I'm on the bottom now. Where am I? I'm on the base. I'm going in through the base of the very next stitch and the base of the very next buttonhole and if you if you've only got two just keep going up and down yours yeah and don't again don't pull it too making sure you're not tightening tying anything up here and don't pull it too tight because you need to be able to tie this up later once again we're going to go into the very next hole or the same hole if you've only got a two hole button and there you go but that's not finished I want to fill up these sec this section here. And there you go. And you're done, right? Now, if you've got a two hole, you would have been done already. Turn it on the inside. Might pay for you to turn your bag inside out for this part. Works better if you're actually on the same side as this bit. So what you're doing is you're going to tighten it up real tight, tie a knot, done.
do it again. Tie another knot. Done. What are you doing with this little guy right here? You're going to weave him in and out of some stitches under your button, making sure you're not coming outside your button. Yeah. Notice how I've got my finger in there just to guide me a little bit. You do it once, you do it twice. You don't need to fuss too much. If you don't want to do it a third time, you don't have to. Or you can do it a third time because we did tie it in knot already. Give it a cut. Reattach your needle. I'm not going to do that to this thread and weave that inside out. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that off air. All right. So remember um, where we had these two single crochets before? Yep. Yeah like that and then we had these join two together here you're going to pop your hook in the fourth stitch well in the join the two together one right there yeah grab your little thread pull it through passing it forward just to lock it into place yeah chain on single in the same stitch you can if you want crochet over this um, bit here, but before you do Pop a little stitch marker in there. I know it's only going to be four stitches But you may you may forget you might not you know you might be good better than me single into your next I'm crocheting over my tail a bit single into the second one. I'm sorry the third one That's your first second and third I'm dropping the tail at the back and putting my single into the chain You know the two together there chain one turn your work single into the first stitch that you're in again your stitch markers are not necessary here if you know your four stitches across you won't need a stitch marker and I went through everything there didn't I hello <laughs> single into your second stitch single into your third and single into your fourth like so taking out your stitch marker that's your second row chain one turn your work all right now you're going to work on these stitches let's do one more row single in there pop your stitch marker in single in your second Single in your third and single in the last stitch with your stitch marker like so. Now if you want to keep using your stitch markers you can. I'm not going to. Chain one, turn your work. Again this is not necessary. You can use your stitch markers to help you if you're new. I'm just going to go one, two, three, and four take out my stitch marker I'm done with my stitch markers chaining one and then turning our work and this is pretty much the pattern for the next I don't know how many rows I'll tell you in a minute because I can't remember how many I've done <laughs> don't you love it I haven't been counting <laughs> don't you love it all right that doesn't matter because there's no right or wrong way oh, don't you love it no right or wrong way of doing this part all right so continue doing those stitches for oh they're almost there um you need to have it a little bit loose do two more rows and then meet me back here no oh, we'll do them together and i'll pop them on fast all right i want you to do two rows of these single crochets and let's head off and do this on really fast and this is our first row That's our second row. I did that on fast, <laughs> chain one, so that you're not having to watch all the time. All right, so this now gets to there. What we want to do is we want to do one single crochet, chain two, and one single crochet. All right, so let's do that right now. So you turn your work like normal, but you are doing 
one single crochet, chain one and two, skipping these two single crochets, jumping straight into your last stitch with a single crochet. Chain one, turn your work. All right, single crochet in your first stitch. You can see it right there. Two single crochets in this space. One and two. One into your single crochet. Now, let's chain one first. Chain one. And before we continue, we want to see if that's going to fit over our button. I'm pretty sure it will. Like so. All right. But we're not finished. Notice how it's closed your bag up, but not over closed it. Just given you enough space to work with. So I would say we might do just one more row. Then we have a final border to do just on the actual flap. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's do one row more of our single crochet. Sorry about the big hands there, guys. One more of our single crochet row. Don't you love it? She's got these big hands sitting right in front of the camera. How sad is that? All right, so uh, I can't remember if we chained one, but mine seems to have come undone. But anyway, turn your work like normal and do your single crochet row. This is your last row. One, two, three, and in your last stitch, four. Now here you actually have to cast off. So pull up a loop. To get the border row done, you actually have to cast off your piece. I know it sounds silly, but it does need to be cast off. And you've got to kind of really pull that thread in so that it's tight to the stitch. Then to do your border row, you need to turn it over at the back. Where the base is, remember the, that stitch we did right there? We're going to pop our hook in the space of that first stitch we did. Yep. Grab your thread. Get excited, guys. This is the last row. Oh, my gosh. This is the last row of our piece. Get way too excited. Pull the thread through, passing it forward. Now, I'll show you exactly where we are so you know. Take it undone. We'll do it again. See that little well I should say big gap right there that's where you want to pop your uh, thread pull it through like so pass your little tail forward because we want to lock that into place here chain one in the same stitch no not in the same stitch sorry you're going to single crochet in the next stitch which is there it's a side stitch of your stitch you're going to pop your hook over it you can crochet over your tail if you like I'm actually going to pop it down because I want to sew it inside the bag and not up the top of the flap, all right? So single one. You don't even have to count. Just find some spaces. Two, if you want to count, let's count. You know, three, whatever suits you. Otherwise, we will just keep going all the way through, like so. Just keep going in every space. I don't think you need to count, yeah, at all. When you get to this area where the buttonhole section is, this is a little loose, but that's okay. You're still going to pop your hook in the big loose space. Yeah. Then you're going to go into the very next stitch right there. And then you go into that stitch with your thread in it. Thread can pass down. Do one single crochet there. Do a second single crochet in the same stitch. Turn and do one. Two and three but in that third stitch you are doing a second single crochet both those corners need two single crochets yeah then you are turning your work going straight into the very next stitch with a single crochet into the stitch where your um, space is with a single crochet it's actually before your space, that one there. This is your space stitch. Or well, it could be before it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Fill in all the spaces. Fill in all the spaces you have. 
keep it going oh my gosh get way too excited we are almost there guys we are almost don't go into the same stitch twice like i nearly just did <laughs> hello <laughs> single and here we go this is the stitch before that center right there now remember we put it in the center we just did a chain one so all you're going to do is jump into the center with a slip stitch pull a loop through pull it through to the loop on your hook pull up a loop give your work a cut for the very last time get way too excited well no not really you still have to weave these ends in and then cut it for that last time <laughs> Now this one here, you're going to notice it's flipping out a little bit. We're going to sew that thread into that next stitch and we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, It's kind of sitting on an angle. That's normal. That is normal. But that will change once we sew that thread in and you'll see. But before you do any sewing, make sure everything fits. Make sure your button fits and everything fits so nicely. Check that out. Simply divine don't you love it well i do anyway all right so before we do anything else uh, and wish each other a happy day <laughs> let's just weave that last thread in because that one there if you don't weave that in right this is going to sit like that all right so grab a sewing needle i'm moving my cup of coffee out of the way look at that <laughs> don't tell them you're having coffee while you're working <laughs> don't you love it um all right <laughs> here we go thread your needle now this is the stitch that we just finished on yeah to to straighten that up you're going to pull that into the very next stitch right through that back loop see that back loop of that next stitch you're going to pop your needle in that back loop right there and watch it straighten up and there you go all straightened up now you're going to turn it on the inside like so tighten it up real tight and weave it in wherever i'm fiddling with this i'm sorry <laughs> i'm fiddling with this and weave it in anywhere you like i'm going to go into some thicknesses that are already there it's already got some weaving in it <laughs> don't do too much weaving in the same spot yeah i just want to pull that real tight that way that see the handle has actually gone nice and straight to keep it straight you need to pull that tight all right, now all you're doing is finding some ends anywhere where you want to weave your piece in. Make sure you can't see the needle, and I can, which means that's not a right place to do it. Better, better. All right, find a spot to weave in all your ends. But this one here was very, very important to weave it in um, nice and tight, yeah? I think we're done, gone through three times, we are done with that little piece right there. Your trickiest stitch is this one here. When you weave that in, weave it in very carefully, or maybe it's best to even weave it in this way. It's best to weave it in very, very carefully because you will be playing with this little flap very often, closing it, opening it, so you're going to be fiddling with it a lot. All right, but there you go, guys, that's it. That is your bag. Check it out. Is it not simply divine? I love it. What I did with this tail here, I weaved it up and down there, you know, rather than um, in front. I kind of weaved it on the side and all the other tails on the inside are woven in. But guess what? It's not enough to have a bag. It really isn't. You have to little purse bag, that is, you should say a purse, um, you have to make sure that it actually can carry anything like, mmm, a car key. Mmm, <laughs> your house keys. <laughs> and they're right down here at the moment. And inside there you can also pop your cards, your credit cards, your library card, some hankies, tissues, whatever you want to put in. And when you want to take off and walk down the street, like that you pop that over your little hands like so or you can carry it like that whichever suits you and that's it guys i thank you very much for joining us i'm going to take the keys out because they really look bulky um thank you very much for joining us here at wow crochet designs and making our gorgeous valentine's day project in the nick of time we have what um a week two weeks a week and a half a week and a half 
or a week even. I can't remember. Anyway, what's the date today? Ask me a harder question like what my name is. All right. So there you go, guys. That is our gorgeous Valentine's Day project that you can make and gift to your family, your friend, your partner, whoever it is you have in your life. Thank you very much for joining us. And thank you to our lovely subscribers for suggesting uh, a love heart purse. We finally made one. I decided in the colour combination because yours truly wanted red. <laughs> Usually we have our subscribers who choose our colour combinations for us. But to be honest with you, I'm a red girl and I wanted my heart in red. <laughs> I thank everyone for joining us. Don't forget to join us for our lives at 10 a.m. Saturday mornings where we are having a very new thing happening. Get excited, guys. We are not only doing our live antics where a subscriber gets to choose a color combination of our very next project, but we are also having a new thing happening where we are crocheting. I'm not going to tell you the name of it because that's a surprise for Saturday's live where we are crocheting a project live what get way too excited thank you for joining me and happy valentine's day to you <laughs> ciao for now